Episode 1 takes place about 30 some odd years before Episode 4, which was the original film. I was looking for a kind of sword fighting that was reminiscent of what was in the movies that we'd already done, but a more energized version of it, because we'd actually never seen real Jedis at work. We'd only seen crippled half-droid, half-men, and young boys that had learned from these old people. So to see a, a Jedi in his prime fighting in the prime of the Jedi, I wanted it to be a much more energetic and, and faster version of what we've been doing. So I think he wanted something special. I think he wanted the audience to understand where these Jedis came from, what their powers were, and how sophisticated they were in the art of battle. With this film, the fighting had to be very strong. But what I had in mind after watching the first Star Wars films was that um, was that you would see that they had studied every single style, swordplay, you know, from Epe to Kendo. That's what we've gone for. I like that. Uh, that's strong in there, isn't it? You know, Kendo movies. <laughs> Since they had chosen such a short-range weapon, they would have to be so good if they're up against ray guns and lasers. But I think it just needed to be much more gritty than it was, you know, much more scary than it was, much faster and much stronger. They had to be constantly in, in check. There's no room for error in any of the fight. You won't see it because they're so fast, but if you slow them down and freeze frame them, they can only parry there, or they can only attack there. The moves are so natural, or so correct, it's the only place they can be. The first time we were rehearsing these fights, of course, we, we started making the sound effects of the lightsabers, like kind of looked at each one and I thought, okay, we have to stop that, you know. I love having my lightsaber. It's the most exciting thing I've ever known, to have my own lightsaber. It's cool. There's not many people can say that they have one. <laughs> we were blessed with both you and, and Liam. Um, I think they understood that it had been written almost as dialogue, and so it was they could relate to it very easily. And it's got such a particular style of its own, really, the, the lightsaber fights. So I don't know, um, it just all came together. I love it, I've really enjoyed it. Ewan picks it up in a flash, and um, now it's, it's, I think, faster than any of us. This is a, this is a Ewan McGregor lightsaber. <laughs> we had to get, it goes through one fight. We had to get stronger ones made. They don't make lightsabers like they used to. Liam has a, has a beautiful style, powerful. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm He's fantastic at it. Like I said I wanted a faster version of what the other movies were, more energetic version. And that's basically what he gave me. And I think the key to it was is that we had a good villain who was a great fighter. I always wanted to fly when I was a kid. But I wanted to be like the guys in the movies. That's how I started my martial arts. I found Darth Maul, and he's being played by a guy called Ray Park. And he's very good in um, uh, like kendo and martial arts, and, and he's a brilliant gymnast. I mean, you know, he's better than I. We actually cast a villain who was a sword fighter. You know, when you have one of the characters who actually knows what he's doing and is really an expert at it, it, uh, it definitely ups the ante for all the other actors to do their thing. Uh, as well as they can, and uh, I think it makes a big difference on the screen. We could see immediately he had the look, he had all the physical skill, um, he was incredibly disciplined, and the amount of work that this guy did it was phenomenal. I mean, he put everything. He spent, you know, 20 hours at the studio every day. The hatred that comes out of his eyes, there's no question that he is the serious bad guy. The uh, makeup, which was beautifully done, instantly shows you someone of, of, of who is a a real menace. The look of um, Darth Maul is a cool. It's cool. I think the makeup and the horns and the lenses and the teeth, you just can't help being naughty, you know, just help being that character. I think we all have a bit of a dark side in us, and so I just try and bring that out myself when I play the character. No, he's got to kick it and then jump up, because in the next cut, he's landing. 
he could oh, so, way so, up. Okay, so, so then he could, he could kick him and then jump. Jump, yeah, yeah kick him and then okay. jump. It would be not a very exciting sequence. I think it was all just done with doubles. Um, I want to try something else. Because most of the emotion of the fight is on people's faces. Yeah, I don't even think... If you did it with stunt people, it would all be, they'd all be little tiny things in the frame. You'd never get close to the emotion uh, that you get when you actually see the actors playing the part and see the actors struggling in the fight sequences. With three months of really hard work, they came up with a wonderful set of choreographic fights that uh, were really remarkable and fantastic. They've got to be down there doing it. But you, you've got to get the sense of, of peril or threat. You know, we, we want them to win. They're our, our heroes, and so we need to be there with them. world a long time ago in a galaxy far far away and it, it continues i look at these as the swashbuckling adventures of you know the modern era so these are the new adventures that expand your imagination do you have any idea what's behind this attack we will find out who's trying to kill you padme they're trying to solve a puzzle though somebody's trying to kill padme and they're trying to figure out who and why while she's asleep. A droid come to the window to kill her. So we both sense that at the same moment. And save the day. Obi Wan goes after them and I race downstairs to grab a speeder and go after them. And they go through everything. They're through buildings, they're upside down, they're shooting it. It's gonna be a fantastic chase. It's so dense. Every single image has so many things going on. Follow that speeder! This is a shortcut, I think. Before we had to do miniatures and stop motion, and now we can do things that were unthinkable before. I mean, you couldn't even think about having a chase through a city. In reality, to do it, we were in a speeder that was rocking about, and that actually made you feel rather sick after a while. It's like going on a fairground ride over and over again where well, you're not allowed to go and have a hot dog you know that was a tough day i was just being thrown around all day trying to hold on and climbing all over the speeder it's pretty nutty you know i don't like it when you do that sorry master i forgot you don't like flying well you've lost it if you'll excuse me i hate it when he does that while annika is sent to protect padme uh, obi-wan goes off to see if he can solve the mystery of who's trying to kill her. Dangerous and disturbing this puzzle is. I go on a kind of Dick Tracy de detective spree. It's good. It's really good. Then uh, the plot deepens, you know. They are using a bounty hunter named Django Fett to create a clone army. Wait. I did lose my lightsaber, and that's something a Jedi should never do. But it was raining, and it slipped. <laughs> Django Fett is able to escape, and there's this wild chase through an asteroid field that is really spectacular. Blast, that's why I hate flying. This time I get to fly a really cool spaceship. A little starfighter of my own. A bit like Luke Skywalker does in his X-Wing when he goes to find Yoda, which is brilliant. That looks fantastic, this thing. They land on Geonosis, and then they get trapped into this droid factory. They made me look so cool. They put me on a conveyor belt with 
nothing. It was all blue around me. So I basically had to run and dodge things and just completely making stuff up. And then they painted stuff around me that looks like I'm like jumping through things and I look so brave. It was pretty exciting. I felt very action star. First they're about to be killed by the monsters and then shot by some droids and then Jedi comes to save them. In Phantom Menace there were four or five Jedi. And this one, there are four or five hundred Jedi. We've never seen that before. There's always been a couple of Jedi fighting each other. Yeah, I think this is the first time that we really get to see all the Jedi in action, uh, which is an amazing sight. All Jedi don't fight exactly alike, so that each Jedi has his own particular style. A lot of the aggression that I hold in my character is exemplified in my fighting style. Jedis are always supposed to be very much in control of their emotions, and Anakin maybe loses control a little bit, and some of the darkness emerges. We've not seen Mace fight yet, and we know that he's second only to Yoda. Now I finally get to do it. I mean, it would be a shame for me to participate in a film like this and never get to use my lightsaber. Uh, so I'm, I'm amped. I was thinking about a style for him, but it's Sam Jackson style, you know, that he has so much style of his own, there's very little you have to do. Since I'm supposedly the second baddest person in the universe, I dispense people pretty quickly. Use as little energy as possible, but I'm pretty lethal. I've probably done more sword fights on celluloid than any actor in history, and this fight is greater than anything I've ever been involved in. It's not very fun not to have a lightsaber when everyone else gets a lightsaber. And I get these guns that look like little hair dryers. <laughs> it was interesting to see her in combat mode. She's a real fighter. They wipe out a lot of the droids and everything, and they escape in these uh, gunships. And then you come out of the arena, and you realize that there's a bigger war going on, that all the Jedi have arrived with clones. And the clone army starts attacking the droid army. Hasn't been a full-scale war since the formation of the Republic. We've got this clone war as... This takes the idea of a, a battle scene and takes it to the level that we'd always sort of been aspiring to but never quite got there. We have clones and droids and flying termites and rockets taking off, flying gunships, ground troops, 200 Jedi. It's much, much more complex than anything we've ever attempted before. There's some really good action in this movie. Uh, people getting wiped out, man. There's some wipeouts in this movie. <laughs> films have the ultimate bad guy which is the emperor but in addition to that there's the sidekick be him darth vader in episodes four five and six darth maul in episode one or count dooku in episode two so we're always trying to work with a sidekick an apprentice to the dark lord <laughs> all right what scares you right alien death no eyes death. i would say most people are afraid of death yeah and death like i imagery and I, well, I think what made Alien scary was no eyes, like teeth. But this thing no, has to act. No taste. It's not right, I know that's what, I'm saying. that's what was scary. Most people are afraid of insects. Insects, yeah, eyes, yeah. mandibles, teeth like that. Yeah, and he didn't seem like a, he was opposed to it actually being a droid or not being right. a droid, too, so it, it could be a number of things. As long as it's scary. I was in the bathroom. I happened to be looking at this uh, spray bottle in the top view, and I kind of saw a face in there, kind of like 
maybe these could be the eyes and this could be some kind of interesting mouth and so that's a kind of, just kind of a way to to play around with it and you could you know as you go you could change things around and make things around and things evolve from there if i'm doing something like this and i want to understand the pose better i can stand here and do that until i get back far enough you know and i can actually try out variations on it i can put some lighting on it i can see you know what's the most dramatic thing for the pose i'm trying to do it's really embarrassing sometimes when you forget you're in a room with people in here. <laughs> That's our art department. Yeah. We're grievous. Once again, we're creating an animated character that doesn't exist and trying to present that to George as, here's your choice of actor. Who would you want? Nice. 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 Your own gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> anyway, if there's anything you have that's too fancy. be kind of careful that we don't recreate Darth Vader here since he sure shows up at the end of the movie. Although, the ultimate <laughs> scary guy, a kid. He's a video Love it. player. Is somebody a parent? <laughs> the ones I like the most. I like this one and this one. And I could like these. We went with the droid. Some of this gets a little devilish. So it, it, it's got to be threatening. It's got to be something. It, I don't want it to be Darth Vader like. I don't, you know, this at least you really know it's a droid. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see more, or do you want to well, develop these? Well, we'll give a chance to develop these. I mean, you can see some more. Maybe got any ideas? It's always open to ideas. Okay. The art department team, I think I've described before, is very much like a jazz band ensemble where you know when it's your time for the drum solo. At the last minute that I had one little sketch I had started before for an idea for the drawer general, we had a little bit of time yet, so I just finished markering it up and I handed it over to Ryan Mendoza. And sure enough, like during the meeting, George went straight to that one and said, this is the one. This guy, with this has human eyes, or not human, but animal eyes, that, you know, would move around, you actually get to see the whites, and you get to see this, and actually organically would might be really ugly. I came up with the idea of General Grievous as a leader of the droid armies. He's kind of a, a little bit of an alien in a droid shell, which is sort of an echo of what Anakin is going to become. Warren's actually made the icon from this film. But you don't know what it means, and I kept telling him, remember what that felt like, because you're going to be telling that story for the rest of your life. <sighs> and George Lucas wanted to make sure that the episode three game experience was just as complete and as authentic as it possibly could be. So we've been working with George from the beginning. We were actually on set in Sydney, just to soak it all in, to walk around in the sets, and of course, to be there the week that they filmed this totally exciting, emotionally packed final duel between Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was awesome. I think the scene I'm most excited to work on in the game is going to have to be uh, the duel. Capital T, capital D. I mean, we've been waiting for this for a long time. When Obi and Anakin face off, and really that's where Darth Vader is born, everybody's been waiting to see that. And then to actually play it, uh, it's going to be a whole new thing in the game. Because, you know, depending on who you are, it may not even turn out the same way. We would join George at the art department at Skywalker Ranch to view the latest concepts, to see how his vision for the film was progressing or evolving, just to make sure that everything we did was in step with everything that was going on with Episode 3. We wanted to bring players the most authentic, most exciting lightsaber duels ever seen in a video game, period. So we knew from the beginning we'd have to call a master. So we called Nick. We had an amazing opportunity to have Nick Gillard, the stunt coordinator for the, uh, all the Star Wars prequels, to come out from England and stay with us for a week, training all our animators on sort of the Jedi arts that he's been perfecting for the past few years. And for our animators, it was really an amazing opportunity because it's one thing to watch reference footage of stuff happening. It's another thing to really feel it in your bones and to have the guy who really made it all up 
right there for you, teaching you the real intricacies and the little details that are going to come through into the final product. If I came in and you went for it, whoa. Yeah. You know, having played a few games myself, and as you're playing it, thinking, God, I wish I could do this, or I wish this button did that. But, you know, we now, because we're working on this game, we're in a position to do that. So we're working particularly on, on footwork, how, exactly how they move, how their wrists move, when they turn, that they turn yeah. the right way, that the blocks and the grapples are correct. And he brought the real lightsaber, so we all got to hold those and, you know, try them out on each other. And then he would show us, no, 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 you don't hold it like that. You're going to get killed, mate. Hold it like this. So he would show us the way to use the lightsaber. And we really learned from that. To the point where some of our animators, they instinctively perform a block move that he taught them. Oh, 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 oh. That's the right move. That's the right move. Which is cool. That means they're actually getting it. And then when, when Hayden came to join him, it was even better because now we're working on character. With Hayden, we have something really unique. We've got someone who has trained for 11 weeks just for this movie. So he's got the muscle memory to do everything just right. And then on top of that, he plays a lot of video games, so he really knows the end application of what we're doing. Stroke, instead of walking up to him at the normal pace that the character would, at this point when it becomes more powerful, it's one step, and he's already there. You know? There were times where Hayden literally goes, I want this to be my idle stance, like, I, and I want my fast opening attack to be this. And what do you say to that besides, uh, okay? Because he just knows exactly what we're going for and is able to apply his knowledge right to what we're doing. Hayden has is putting a lot of character into his moves, so his posture, the way he is arrogant about blocking people, and the way that he is, uh, his shoulders are sort of slouched forward, like he doesn't care anymore. These are little subtle things that you might not pick up on if you're not looking for that kind of stuff. I've seen so, uh, you know, what they've done so far on the game, you know, like renderings of characters, but they look amazing. It, you know, it's going to be the closest thing to, to a movie, I think, that we've, we've seen in the game so far. The fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin at the end of the film is epic. Just unbelievable lightsaber fighting. Um, yeah, the game is just going to go nuts with that. I, I've never been involved in a, in a video game project. It was fantastic to work on. It has all the fluidity and artistry of a finely tuned fight sequence in a movie, yet the player is able to like take it any way they want. Being a Jedi and learning the art of lightsaber sword fighting, that's what you're going to see in the game. And we, we really want to blow it up. to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. The Sith are the arch enemies of the Jedi and for a long time they ruled the universe until the Jedi came along and uh, got rid of them. What if I told you that the Republic was now under the control of the Dark Lord of the Sith? The Sith characters in the previous Star Wars have been Darth Vader. The other apprentices are Darth Maul who was in uh, episode one. And uh, in episode two and three, it's Count Dooku, who is Darth Tyrannus. The evil master Sith in all of the films is Darth Sidious, who becomes the emperor of the universe. In time, you will call me master. Only one trilogy has been the heart of every movie collection. On September 21st, it will be again the Star Wars trilogy on DVD. Yahoo! For the first time ever, own the greatest saga of all time on the ultimate format. Join Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2 in the final 
three episodes of George Lucas's epic saga. I have been expecting you. This four-disc DVD set includes all three classic films. I got him! Great kid! Don't get cocky! Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Use the Force, Luke. Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. I am your father. No! And Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Each film has been digitally restored, frame by frame, and remastered for the ultimate picture quality. Just for this DVD release, they've been remixed in 5.1 Surround DX for the best possible digital sound quality. And for the first time ever, hear all new feature-length commentaries for all three films with George Lucas, cast, and crew. Impressive. Most impressive. To complete your trilogy experience, Lucasfilm has explored the far reaches of the galaxy to create a bonus fourth disc loaded with over four hours of special features that are as epic as the films themselves. <laughs> I told you they do it! <laughs> Featuring Empire of Dreams, the most comprehensive documentary ever created on the making of the Star Wars trilogy, including all new interviews with more than 40 cast and crew members who brought the films to life. I believe in these movies. I think they're very entertaining, and I think if I can get a room full of people and they enjoy it, then I've done what I hope to do. See three featurettes chronicling the evolution of the legendary characters of Star Wars. Get a glimpse at the birth of the lightsaber, and hear firsthand from notable filmmakers about the influence of Star Wars. Star Wars has allowed the technology of film to move forward. All of us who are making films today are benefiting from that. Plus, see teasers, trailers, TV spots, and still galleries for each film. And get a DVD-ROM web link to exclusive Star Wars content. I love you. I know. That's just the beginning. Fans who want to live the Star Wars adventure can experience an Xbox playable demo of the new LucasArts video game, Star Wars Battlefront, where you can be on the front lines of every classic Star Wars battle. It is useless to resist. Plus, get a first-hand look at the making of a highly anticipated Episode 3 video game. And if that's still not enough, be the first to get an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at Star Wars Episode 3 in the return of Darth Vader. This will be a day long remembered. Join me. It is your destiny. No! This September, the Force will be with you. Always. Bring the Force back to your movie collection. The Star Wars Trilogy on DVD. Available September 21st. Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. The critics agree it's the best DVD produced to date. This two-disc set provides the perfect showcase for George Lucas's first episode in the mythic Star Wars saga. Experience the film like you never imagined. THX digitally mastered for the ultimate picture and superior sound quality. Star Wars Episode 1, the new standard in DVD. It was worth the wait. On November 12th, the saga attacks on DVD. Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Digitally filmed, digitally mastered, a perfect clone. Own the first major live-action film on DVD captured directly from its digital source. This two-disc set is packed with over six hours of bonus features you'll actually want to watch. Star Wars Episode 2, begin the attack on DVD November 12th. Star Wars. Yoda's Jedi power is in your hands with the new Yoda electronic lightsaber. Real movie sound effects. Light up blade. Now you can wield the power of a true Jedi master. Star Wars electronic lightsabers. Each sold separately. Batteries not included. Now you can go to videonow.com and check out the latest and greatest shows available for Video Now. It's all online at www.videonow.com.